How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. It is Friday here on this show. You know what that means. We have a lot to get into today, as always. It is a Friday Night Smackdown here tonight. We've got like three weeks left until WrestleMania, and we still got to put together some matches, including whatever we're doing with this tag team title match, which I think you all know what we're doing for this tag team title match. Jay Uso will be appearing on the show tonight after turning on Sami Zayn on Monday's Raw. We have Braun Strowman and Ricochet versus the Viking Raiders at a number one contender's fatal five-way. The winner of this match gets Gunther's Intercontinental Championship match at WrestleMania. We have Drew McIntyre, Sheamus, Xavier Woods, L.A. Knight, because you cannot have an L.A. WrestleMania with that L.A. Knight I hear, Karrion Cross, and of course Xavier Woods is replacing Kofi Kingston. It was reported in the New Observer newsletter that Kofi is going to be out about five weeks. They did that angle last week where Drew McIntyre did a flip dive, and pretty much the only guy that caught him was poor Kofi. And then he landed on Kofi's leg, and now Kofi is going to be out. And uh, thankfully, nothing snapped, broke, anything like that. But five weeks, won't need surgery, but he will be missing WrestleMania. So uh, Xavier has vowed to win this match and go on to WrestleMania. So we got that. We got notes on the Elite and their contracts, AW Dynamite and Roblox ratings. John Cena heading to the Nightmare Factory a bunch of other AEW notes as well, including a lineup for Friday, and plenty more. So stick around. Mike Sembervivi will join us after the break. If you want text, of course, 425-780-7566 is the phone number. That is 425-780-7566. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sembervivi also of WrestlingObserver.com. Man, I always look. What's the chat talking about here today? What should we focus on? They're talking about daylight savings time. Sucks. What do you mean it sucks? I'm so happy that we're switching back on Sunday night. Or Look, Saturday. man, it's I'm tired Saturday of this whole... Night. I'm tired of gaining an hour of sleep just so it can get dark at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, for heaven's sakes. Just get it over with. I don't think the farmers need this anymore. I don't know who needs this anymore. Just set it back, leave it alone, and that's that. Well, we're sending it back on Saturday. You should be thrilled. You should be overjoyed. We get an hour more of daylight later on in the day. That's great. I'm happy about that, but I'm I'm tired of this whole rigmarole we have to go through. When well, we're yes, we should not have this. Slow winter this should be, this should then... be done. Exactly. We should we should switch it on Saturday and not worry about it again. Actually, okay? it's, it's Sunday, two o'clock in the morning. It's yeah. Saturday, Eastern you, time. You you nerds Where all on the of East civilization Coast. in America is. You don't you don't run this place. Yeah, we do. Nah. You know, yeah, you know, do. in Hawaii, it's it's Saturday. Well, yeah, but that's why Hawaii. is the East Coast more important in Hawaii? It's not. If I was in Hawaii, I would say that. But you know, fact of the matter is, we switch the clocks late Saturday night. It's going to be awesome. Get more sun. Everything's great. We'll stop being so damn pale. The weather, boom, like that, just turns around here in Seattle. It's going to be awesome. Please, I wish. AW is working on signing the elite to new long-term contracts before they hit free agency. All three men, founding members of AEW, hold executive vice president roles, which to this day I don't even know what that means, but they have them. January, Meltzer means said... health insurance, buddy. That's what that means. AEW is interested in re-signing Matt and Nick to new deals, but the process is yet to begin. Late February, he reported, this is Dave, Omega's contract... Set to expire at the end of January, was extended by an unknown amount of time due to the eight months he missed due to injury. Well, it is an unknown length of time, but if I had to wager a guess, it would be eight months. But I don't know. I mean, isn't that how it works? If you yeah, had time that, due to injury, it it's the was. time you were out due to injury? But anyway. I don't think you can negotiate that. All three were suspended following the post-all-out fight. So I guess we'll see where everybody ends up going. I mean, you'd have to ask them. But, you know, the thing with the, the thing with the Young Bucks in particular, as a tag team, I do think, here's the thing with, with, and they wrote about this in their book, the Young Bucks really like and respect and had a good time dealing with Triple H, Paul Levesque, okay? 
But at the time, Paul was not in charge. And you know how Vince was with tag teams. So, you know, the right, the easy decision was to was to go to AEW. And now here we are, and it's 2023. And here's the thing that we all know, okay? If there's one thing we know for sure about WWE is we don't know what's going on, okay? So do you remember when uh, do you remember when all those guys wanted out because of Vince and then Triple H showed up and they all wanted back? Well, now we don't – Triple H could be gone tomorrow. Triple H could be gone after WrestleMania. I mean, yeah, Vince showed up to visit with uh, John Cena and then just happened to sit at Gorilla all night. I mean, I think we all know uh, the dude could be back fully in charge literally at any time. Maybe he will, maybe he won't. We don't know. But, you know, I if I were the Bucks and I was a tag team and I had young children – and I was making a lot of money, and I had to work a, one day a week. Bro, this is an easy decision for me. I'd rather stay with AEW. Kenny Omega? I don't know. He's a single. You know, even even when Vince was in charge, Cody Rhodes walked in to a main event. He walked in as a main eventer. He's main eventing WrestleMania. And, you know, if, if Vince hadn't left, all the same thing was going to happen. I mean, he was still going to main event WrestleMania. He was still going to be a giant star. So, you know, Kenny Omega, he probably has the opportunity to walk in and be a top guy and make a tremendous amount of money. So, you know, I don't know what everyone's going to decide. I don't know what everyone's going to decide. If I had to wager a guess, because people have asked, been asking me all these different things, like, where do you think this guy's going? Where do you think that guy's going? I have... Let me, let me make this abundantly clear before you write stories. I have no inside information. But if you ask me what I think, which is different from what I know, what I think is the Young Bucks would prefer to stay with AEW. Kenny Omega, I would say it's 50-50. And uh, Jay White, I believe, is going to WWE. These are all, this is all what I think. But it's not what I know, so we'll see what happens. But uh, that's the update on the uh, negotiations. I'm sure everybody will listen to exactly what you said and not say that you reported all of that stuff. There's just, to me, there's too many moving parts here because if you're Kenny Omega and you're thinking, okay, you know what, I'm out of here in five years. There are other things I want to do in my life. There are other adventures that I want to take. I'm going to be done with the wrestling business. You know what? Maybe I do go up there and take a shot, you know, young bucks, same way if they're at the end and, you know, but there are so many things tied in. You have family members of the young bucks who work for AEW, you know, will that affect anything on paper? Usually it doesn't, but you know, things happen when, when relationships and families and things like that are at work. So will that have anything to do with it? Does Japan have any impact when it comes to Kenny Omega because if I recall correctly and Brian correct me if I'm wrong here but when the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega were being talked to by WWE there was this talk about there was a part-time role or it was going to be limited dates and they were going to get some things that maybe others had not gotten before you know and I could be wrong about that but like Kenny Omega if he wants to go to Japan He's not really going to be able to do that for WWE unless there's something in there that says, hey, you can go off and do these things. So to me, I, you know, who knows? I don't know these men well enough to know exactly what's going on in their minds and in their lives where, you know, for a lot of people, they may look at WWE as the evil empire, but a lot of people may look at it as one last paycheck as well, too. And again, even with it, does Saudi Arabia have anything to do with that? If you have a a moral compass or you have thoughts on something, you know, does who owns the company play a part in that? So who knows, you know, who knows what any of these guys are going to do, but I, I can guarantee you it's going to be bantered about online until they do. And listen, even though we got folks here in the chat that are certain of things, don't be, do not be certain that WWE would not put something in Kenny Omega's claws that would allow him to do some new Japan shows. Okay. Yeah. If Vince were in charge, no chance, okay? But with Triple H in charge, it's happened. 
Okay. Well, here's the we thing, saw Brian, it with Carl Anderson. We saw it with Shinsuke Nakamura. Like they let it happen, and people told did. me it ain't gonna happen. Carl's not going back. They told me he's not. Well, he did. And well, they and I, let him do that, and they let Nakamura do that, and perhaps they would let Kenny Omega do that. Perhaps they wouldn't. But you cannot say no chance. Well, and that's, yeah, it's who they Vince would ever like. Because I believe it did happen one time under Vince. Did Nakamura not make a trip over there for some reason? I thought somebody had. But, again, with this... <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I don't know. We can get into the weeds on this way too much when it comes to just bantering about, you know, where these men may speculatively go. But honestly, I'm with you. I think both of them stay there. Both sides of that stay there. And I think Jay White, even though it drives a lot of people nuts who do not want to see him go there, he's going to go to WWE. And if you remember, Finn Balor and AJ Styles did not have poor debuts and they were not it's not like they were not in the world title picture right off the bat you know Finn Balor won the the first universal title at Wrestlemania if I remember correctly before he got hurt so I think sometimes too there's a concern with some of these guys that they're going to go over there just be buried and die and I don't think that's the case not necessarily the case in, in, in all in all cases don't okay, head to a break everybody I got more Thank news God. holy crap I got more news coming oh. up after the break I'm dying here. Uh, yeah, I let you. Where's I, the music? I let you die. <laughs> Thanks, like your hair. What? Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Elber is here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Hey, anyone here live in Indiana? Nearby? Well, oh God, no. I did a long interview today with Amir Abbas of ABC 21 News in Indiana. And I believe I will be on all of the evening newscasts tonight. Oh, a sting. Talking about the WWE gambling oh. gimmick they're trying oh. to uh, trying to get going. So uh, check it out tonight if you are uh, in the Indiana. I think it's like an area, right? The Kentuckiana area? Indiana-ish. Yeah, Texarkana. Wait, yeah. wait, wait. Where is channel... What, what is this station? ABC 21 News in Indiana. ABC 21. And you know, in fact, on top of that, I did uh, for your Fort viewing... Wayne. Fort Buddy Wayne, Indiana. For your uh, viewing pleasure, I did mm -hmm. wear the same shirt that I wore when I impersonated Vince McMahon. Oh, God. Did you have it hanging open, too? Because... Of course I did. Jesus. What do you think I have a tie? No, I just let me you tell have you a something. button though that you never use anymore. Look at what you got on now. I used to be I used to be uh <laughs> some gold chains and talk fat. Meat. Look at that. For lack of a better term. Oh no, you were not. Uh, fat. Five six and one ninety five, dude. That's that's pretty heavy. Well. So anyway, I had a lot of suits that uh, if you watch, we did a, a Brian and Vinny show a little while ago, and I decided to wear a suit, and I looked like I was wearing my, uh, not even my dad, I looked like I was wearing Craig's suit. I was just swimming in the thing. And I was like, none of this fits me anymore. And so I got rid of all my dress clothes, every single one of them, okay? And then it turned out that uh, old Sean, you know, from the Brian and Vinny and Craig and Sean and Granny and 85 other people show, he was getting married. So I needed a I needed a suit, and so I bought uh, a suit, jacket, pants, shoes, and a shirt. I have one, one, and so I uh, I wore that shirt today for my interview. Mm. Looking sharp. <laughs> you gonna hold on to it now, or just wax the car with it at this point? <laughs> All right, we got more news here. We got ratings. So the dynamite follow up to the the pay per view eight hundred and fifty eight thousand viewers, which was up three percent from last week. It was the second highest total in the last month. Eighteen to forty nine fourth on cable with a point two nine, which was the second highest eighteen to forty nine of the last four weeks. And uh, not a not a fantastic number in any way. And you know what the issue was with this with this rating was uh, it opened at just under a million. It was like nine hundred and eighty or nine sixty or something like that. And the first forty five minutes of the show, it stayed there. It was like just barely under a million. And then man, that thing fell off a cliff over the next hour. Over the next hour. 
That show lost 225,000 viewers. Yikes. And then grew a little bit for the uh, Powerhouse Hobbs Wardlow main event. But, you know, we've mentioned this, you know, countless times. It seems that this audience is all about the matches. And they watched for about 45 minutes, probably some of them wanting to see what happened at the pay-per-view, get some fallout. And then I think they just saw the rest of the show and were like, no big matches I want to see. And a lot of them tuned out. Now, you know, 225,000, they, they still maintained, you know, a large portion of their audience. But every every wrestling promotion, whether it's AEW, whether it's Raw, SmackDown, NXT, you know, whatever, TNA, they all have a core audience, okay? And then you have the people on top of that core audience that they are going to decide if they're going to watch or not watch based on whatever it's going to be, Okay. And, you know, the AW core audience seems to be about 750,000 people or so. Raw seems to be about, you know, out, outside of football season, probably, I don't know, 1.6 million. During football season, probably about 1.3. SmackDown's got the best core audience. I mean, that thing is stable. And, uh, you know, different people, whenever people try to analyze this too much, like why the people tune out? Why didn't they tune out? At the end of the day, we don't know, okay? I don't know why those 225,000 people tuned out that hour, but they did. And, you know, probably was the lineup for the show, the announced lineup. So we'll see what happens on uh, Rampage and next week. I mean, next week, I don't know when they're going to put that uh, three-way trios title match, but that match is right up this audience's alley. So that at least should do a very, very good number, and then we'll see what they do for the rest of the show. They have announced uh, more. We have got the triple trios title match. House of Black versus Jericho Appreciation Society versus The Elite. We have the MJF Re Bar Mitzvah, and he usually does good numbers. We have got Orange Cassidy, Jeff Jarrett for the international title. And then we've got Hangman, Stu Grace, and Nibel Uno versus Moxley, Claudio, and Wheeler Yuta, which is interesting because, you know, Stu Grayson back here, obviously, for this match. And, you know, Moxley and Hangman, two giant stars. But they are in a six-person match. So it'll be interesting to see how this audience reacts to that. Because you do have two big stars going head-to-head, but also with other people in the match. So that is the lineup for the Dynamite show. And then everybody's favorite show, NXT, Roadblock. 624,000 viewers, up 12%, second highest audience since New Year's Evil, 13th on cable, 0.17, which is actually a really good demo number for them, 0.17, up 30.8% from last week, up in every single category. And year to year, they were up 1.8% in overall viewers and 30.8% in 18 to 49. So, you know, folks were into that roadblock show. So good for them. You know, I'm looking at the quarter hours here for Dynamite. If I'm not mistaken, Orange Cassidy and Jay Lethal have gotten, when they have been together, whatever it's been, they have gotten very good ratings. Yeah, and that's a hot match every time. Yeah, and I'm looking, and the amazing thing here is one thing that always gets pointed out for those people that really hate AEW, they'll take that quarter one to quarter two number and then just bash them for it. And it's like, look, the lead-in is one thing, and then, yeah, it, it always goes down almost no matter what they made it and only lost a thousand people in fact it's really you know statistically it's less than that i guess going up until 8 30 and the decline after that as you mentioned was very slow until the end so i don't know if also it could have been fatigue you know you know they people did look at it and go i'm not interested I, I do, I am interested, but I'll check in a couple days. I just watched, I stayed up till midnight watching the pay-per-view, you know, a couple days ago. Whatever it is, you know, NBA game, whatever it happened to be, that first hour, when especially that first half hour, is really good. So whatever the elite and the Young Bucks decide to do in the three-way and all that stuff, just say that Orange Cassidy and Jay Lethal are going to be a part of it and maybe people will tune in. 
Well, I don't think we're going to add those to that match, but they have they done should. very well every time that they have uh, had a match together. They should just have them fight throughout. Like, they could be going at it and just, like, brawl right through. Like, it was Hacksaw Duggan and Harley Race at the Slammy Awards. Just chaos going on. Well, we also have on that uh, Dynamite show Jade Cargill with an open challenge to anybody from Canada. Mm. And uh, the only AEW uh, contracted... Female star from Canada, contracted, contracted, contracted doesn't sound right. Contracted sounds, well. is the bunny who was out due to injury. I don't know when she's going to be back. But the New Observer noted that Taya Valkyrie could soon be joining AEW or WWE. She is finished up with Impact, is not committed to MLW for a long time, so I don't know if MLW would have to allow it or what, but... Uh, it could be Taya Valkyrie as she, the surprise for She finished up with Triple A. That was noted that she finished up with Triple A. She wouldn't be going back there. So she's going to one of the two major companies. And I would just think if I were her, and again, everybody's situation is different in what they're in. But uh, when she was Frankie Monet, I mean, it was a nice start on NXT. She had a cute little dog and everything. And it looked like, hey, they're going to do something with her. And then she was basically immediately cut. So. Well, if you remember the timing, I mean, they were going to do something with her. And then Vince and Kevin yeah. Dunn and the crew took over. So, you know, there's another one. People are going, why would she ever go back? Why would she ever go back? Well, because the person who was pushing her is in charge right now. Now, will he be in charge in a week? I don't know. Yeah. But you got to take this stuff into account, everybody. And because, in fact, there's another guy in charge right now. For for now, at well, least. People for find now. that hard to believe, but it's true. Hey, look, if she's willing to give up Mexico, I don't know how often she goes over to Europe. I don't think she goes to Japan really at all. So it's like, you know, if she's this, you know, this is going to be it. She's looking for money and she's looking for some stability. Either company would probably be good. I mean, the women, look, with the right to be with all things being even. If Vince is not involved, I would probably tell her, go to WWE and see what you could do there. But, again, there's all those question marks, and there is a hole to punch through in AEW. It's just a matter of anybody besides Britt Baker and Jamie Hayter actually doing it. We're, we're, we're seeing what's going to happen now with Tony Storm and out now with Ruby Soho. But there is a hole to punch through there to be a star in the women's division. John Cena showed up at the Nightmare Factory, paid a visit to Cody and QT. Maybe he talked QT into helping Hobbs get that big win. Posted a photo of Cena with members of the school's ninth training camp. Cena spoke to the class ahead of their showcase event for March 23rd, and they referred to him as the GOAT. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back here on the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com, and you, the loyal Friday listeners. 844-913-2727 is the phone number. That is 844-913-2727. DJ, I'm sorry in the chat uh, if I would have come through a little bit better today. Had a couple more hot takes this may not be happening right now. Bro, after the hot take, after that first segment, I knew calls had uh, to take place today. It, it did. You know, I'm, I'm blaming the chat right now. I'm blaming them. But you know what? I need to blame myself, and I apologize for that. Well, you know you can text us, too, 425-780-7566. You can also email me, brian at wrestlingobserver.com, or you can get a Cameo, F4W Online, on Cameo. I don't can know what do that had Canadian to do with anything. Accent? If you're asked, will you do accents? I Will always, you do impressions? I always do accents. Frazier says, guess Tony Khan was right about Orange Cassidy and Jay Lethal. Yeah, he was. They moved yeah. them numbers, those two guys. Do you think Jade's opponent on Wednesday could be the debut of Taya Valkyrie? Well, yeah. Now, I don't know if she's going to beat her, but I do believe that she could uh, She could debut. And you know what? I don't know if they've ever done the deal. Has, has AEW ever done the deal where somebody debuted and won a title in their first ever match? Like, WWE has done that many times. No, they, usually they beat somebody debuting well, in their first That's match. NXT as well, yes. Hey, look, I don't know how what kind of ringleader Taya Valkyrie is. I've never been in the ring with her, and I don't know what kind of teacher she could be, but I'll say this. If you want to go in there, beat Jade, 
and then have Jade kind of chase her and I, the more they can work together, it would not be the worst idea in the world. I mean, the thing that Jade needs is reps and to work with people who are be is better than she is. And there's not tons, there's not a ton of people like that there. And Frankie Monet slash Taya Valkyrie could be one of those people. First here says, his access disappeared? They haven't said a word for this year. Same with the Hall of Fame. I don't know if there's going to be an access because it seems like they should have announced it by now. But there should be a Hall of Fame announcement coming literally at any time. Could be today. Could be Monday. Could be this weekend. But I think I, I, I have the impression we're going to get a Hall of Fame announcement very, very soon. This person here asking about neck beards. The neck beard insult, this person says, has been around for a bit. It's insulting a guy for the inability to grow anything but a neck beard, like someone is born with facial bald spots. I used to have one of those. It, the hair wouldn't grow in a certain area on my face. On the mustache right there, you couldn't do the full. I, I can't do the big mustache. It just doesn't work. But, uh, yeah, neck beard. I, I, was just, I was really thinking about... Uh, Ruby Poor Soho's kid. promo, and she called those fans neck beards. And I've heard, obviously, that insult many times about wrestling fans. But it really got me thinking, like, you grow is a beard really... on your neck, and so you're, like, an idiot? Is but that, is that what like, it what? means, though? Is it mean? Does it mean that, or does it just mean, like, you're fat and unkempt, and, like, you just... Like, I never took it as you can only grow hair on your neck. I never thought of it that way. I thought it was just, like, you see somebody and they're just unshaven and they don't have any of this done because... Like, you grow just... all of your beard, but if you don't trim right here, you're a neck beard and that's, like, some sort of insult? Well, if yeah, if you don't I don't get the neck beard thing. And... I get smelly, I if you call the fans smelly. There's a lot of those. Because there definitely are smelly fans. Uh-huh. And if you call them, like, you know, uh, peanut-brained hadrosaurs, I got that one. A lot of those. But but a neck beard. You know, especially, too, because, you know, after the – once that pandemic hit, nobody left home anymore. I mean, people started going to all these Zoom meetings. Every year. You're wearing your sweatpants, and you're not dressing up. So it's not about being unkempt. Like, everyone's unkempt nowadays. I want to know why neck beard is an insult. That's what I want to know. I'm not wearing pants right now, Brian. Never do. Well, you can thank Mike for this call, everybody. Let's go to uh, Dagan, actually. The guy who complains all the time. Now, let's hear what this important call is, Dagan. Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey, look, uh, you haven't taken phone calls in like a year, so I had to get in on this. Um, I just was curious what you guys think. I was bringing this up in the chat earlier, um, back to the conversation about these free agents that could potentially sign with WWE. Uh, if you were them, put, put yourself in their shoes for a second. Do you think the decision to sell the company at all impacts potentially, you know, where they might go? Because, like, there's a good chance that Saudi Arabia, I hate to tell you all, could potentially be the, their new boss by the end of the year. So why don't I just bring that up and see what you guys think? But, hey, thanks for opening up the phone lines, guys. It's been a while. Oh, I love hearing your voices. You hear my voice every day whether I open the phones or not. What are you talking about, Dagan? What he's really trying to say is it's great to hear my own voice. That's what he's saying. How do I drop this? I've been taking calls so long I don't even know how to use this thing anymore. Hey, listen, Dagan, everybody. Obviously, you got to take all that into account. You have to take everything into account. I mean, I don't know what the hell's going on. I mean, if I'm Kenny Omega, do you guys realize that Kenny Omega had like nine surgeries or some crazy number a year ago? I don't know how long that guy's going to be, you know, able to keep doing this. So uh, I don't know. I, I don't know anything. What is he being offered? What is a what? Maybe AEW offers him a million, and uh, then you know, WWE offers him five million. I'm just throwing out numbers. It's unlikely, but maybe they offer him hundred million dollars. Who knows? You know, like, he may be at the point in his career where it's like I need to make as much money as I possibly can for three years, and then I'm out of here. Okay. So then, well, you'd probably go to WWE because they could probably offer you more money. And, uh, you, know, you know, the Young Bucks, they got kids. Maybe they've got enough money. I don't know. I don't know what they do with their money. Maybe they've got, maybe they've got enough and a few more years in AEW and they can retire and they get all this time with their little kids who are like, you know, seven, eight, whatever. You know, they've they got to take that into consideration. You know, maybe they want to be owned by a company – and, and we don't even know who's going to buy him. It probably is going to be Saudi Arabia. We don't know. We don't know anything. So you got to make a you got to make a decision in a in a short period of time if your deal's coming up, and you got to weigh all those things. 
And it's never just one thing. It's it's a bunch of things, and everyone's different, so I don't know. I don't know. Let's let's be blunt, too, at this point, because now we know that there were NDAs, and we know some of the things that Vince has settled about rape and has been accused of and all this other stuff that is taking place, including using his powers against a talent, an actual talent that he had a relationship with and then demoted and then ultimately released. Is Saudi Arabia as a... Yes, terrible human rights record, this, that, and the other. But then, flip side, okay, then is Vince McMahon, if you're going to work for Vince? yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Look, everybody is owned, in most cases, by somebody bigger, or there's going to be somebody that they're in business with that you have a moral problem with, but... I mean, right now, you can make that case for anybody going to sign with WWE. And just because Vince is in charge, and now we know for a fact what has come out and what has been done. And, you know, are you going to go take money from that guy? You know, does anybody jump on Daniel Bryan for saying he always, you know, had a good relationship with Vince and that he was close to Vince and all that sort of stuff? No, (laughs) you know, because that's how it works sometimes. It's terrible that way, but... Again, we'll have to see what happens here, but I think some I think when it comes to Saudi Arabia, some of the talk about will media do business with them and all that other stuff, I think is I don't know. I think people are trying to do a little bit too much with it because it comes down on to many cases with the dollar and with live golf that people talk about or well they're you know, nobody wants to be negotiating with them or in business with them. Look at how powerful the PGA is and how entrenched they are in boardrooms and in that culture before you know it's not just about the fact that we're not doing business with saudi arabia it's because you're doing bigger business with somebody else the guy here says it doesn't matter who buys of course it matters who buys it always matters who buys the buyer always matters the buyer is going to matter in in terms of of you know what they do with wwe is vince going to be back in creative is he not going to be back in creative and also matters to the wrestler we already have pat mcafee who pretty much posted I don't know what my future is because, you know, I don't know who's going to buy this thing. If you've got screw you money, then if you don't want to go because Saudi buys them, you ain't going to go. It does matter. If you don't have that kind of money, then I don't know what to tell you. Sami Zayn. You don't think it matters who buys it in the the case of one of their biggest stars right now? Think again. It does matter. Okay. But I don't know who's going to buy it. Well, and if you have Syrian roots or Syrian people in your family or you are a part of a culture that is bumping head up with the kingdom, then, yeah, it, it is probably going to make a big decision there and change your mind on things, which is one of the reasons why it's nice to have options for as much as people don't like AEW in some cases or some of the other companies that are out there. That's why they're very important. Person here says, so Jade is facing a Canadian. Why not LeFisto or Nicole Matthews? Well, it could be anybody. Okay. Well, not anybody. Well. But yeah, she challenged she challenged a Canadian. What is that noise? Yep, everybody. This is a Friday program. Dude. The video computer's all of a sudden making a lot of noise. <laughs> it's trying to kill this show. Wow. Let's see. I heard Chris Hero made an appearance at West Coast Pro this past Saturday in a commission role. Is Chris Hero wrestling at all? He hasn't wrestled since March of 2020. Does he have a career-ending injury? Any idea? I don't know. I have absolutely no idea. I don't know what his what his deal is. But, yeah, he's there in a commissioner role now. Good. It's a good company anyway. He's a smart guy. I, I'm sure he does things, podcasts, and everything. Everybody has one. But he's one of those guys that's just a, and I mean this in the best way, he's a great wrestling nerd. You know, uh, he knows history. He's watched a lot of wrestling, can talk about a bunch of different territories. You know he could work. I mean, his team with Claudio was fantastic. And, you know, unfortunately, because of his weight issues in the eyes of some people, he wasn't, you know, whatever it is, you know, he didn't look good enough for TV, wasn't cosmetically pleasing enough or whatever it was, you know, didn't get some of the shots that maybe he should have had. And that's disappointing, but I'm happy he's still hanging on in wrestling. Person here says, uh, Mike in Fort Wayne, you can watch my appearance tonight. Mike in Fort Wayne on the ABC News affiliate. Is there any chance WWE can say Bray or is it too late? Well, it's never too late. 
I mean, you can always try, but uh, what are they even doing with Bray? They brought him back. They did the White Rabbit stuff. Bloke never wrestles. He's had, what, one match? What was he had Good. one match? It's Rarely fine. on television. It's fine. It's like. It's fine. I got a better question for you. What about Alexa? What happened to her? At least Bray's got oh, a match coming up. Don't get up. started. And look, and here's she's the thing, just, too. She's just at uh, Disney. What would you That's rather all. have? Bray Wyatt on TV every single week wrestling in a match and all this nonsense or just what we're doing right now and saving him for big events and one-offs and things like that? I mean, I, I, your, your option is not none of him. Well, okay. I'm not saying the guy should be fired, but uh, I mean, here's the question. What can he do? That's the question. Can he wrestle regularly or not? I mean, don't they still have WWE films? Can he go make some horror movie? Him and Alexa, no, let them go get, make movies or whatever. They had to get rid of that, but I mean, Pete they did and all that stuff. Did yeah, they get rid they of had, WWE films? Yeah, they shuttered that. Did they? Lost, lost a bunch. Is that true? Well, I know they they did. Actually, you know what? Some of them were doing all right. Like they weren't losing a ton. They weren't making a lot, but well, they had that one too with Randy Orton about the uh, the amateur wrestling thing when they actually had like Randy, you know, showed some sensitivity and things like. And nobody watched that movie whatsoever. But I guess what was the one that actually made money? See, No Evil was the one, right? That was the big one. Why is Norwegian Cruise Lines calling me? I don't know. Oh. Maybe they're upset with you know bashing the Marine for all those years. They liked that movie. Back in a moment, everybody. Observer Live. That was my personal cruise consultant calling. Mm -hmm. I didn't know I had a personal cruise consultant. And they, they, they addressed me by their own first name, whatever it was. Are you serious? Hello, Brian. This is so-and-so, your personal cruise consultant. I'm like, what? <laughs> so anyway, I guess they want to talk. Well, I'm not going to call them back. You got it like that. I guess so. Unbeknownst to me. Mm. Or they just want money. See, got that, that it was like the, that. That was the uh, the problem with going on that Jericho cruise. See, now they're just going to blow you up nonstop. You're on a mailing list. They got gotcha. you. Apparently, I'm on a I'm on a calling list. Hey, those phone calls weren't so bad, were they? Everybody, it was exactly one guy. No one it else. Was Dagan. It was Dagan. Everybody likes Dagan. This person says, of course, this is from a few days ago. Of course, this Twitch chat comes after me. I'm referring to the week before the pay-per-view. Did Dynamite really need a two varied Battle Royals ladder match right before the pay-per-view? Then we come back the night after the show with a no-DQ match. Then there's a huge match next week, as you mentioned. It's Chris in Vegas. Well, you know, we should have gotten into that a little bit because he does make some points. He does make some as... good points. He does. He does. And they do do some things that they don't follow up on. They do... A lot of goofy things like, you know, themed nights and theme matches and all that sort of stuff. And perhaps it, it's a little bit too much and they should be concentrating on some other things. I don't think that that's a, a sin to say. No, no, I'm not angry they use my first name when they called. I said they use their first name. They were like, hey, Brian, it's Dwayne, your personal cruise consultant. <laughs> Who? Are you the rock? Dwayne? Anyway. Chris, text me uh, Monday, and maybe we can talk about this here on the show. I'd be happy to. Uh... I didn't dox the guy. I don't know his last name. I didn't even tell you what cruise line. Did I? Maybe I did. Uh, uh, I made the name up anyway. His name was not Dwayne. It was, it was a female. Anyway, we're out of time, Ooh. everybody. I got to get going. I got a lot to do here. I got to call my personal cruise consultant back and do some other stuff. So anyway, we'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.